Exodus 16.35 And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years, until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. A Christian was talking with me about the number forty and its significance in Scripture. He called it a magical number. I don't use that terminology because magic is too often associated with witchcraft. But continuing along the same lines of thinking, I shared my thoughts on the subject. Personally, I would call 40 a common biblical number rather than a magical one. Here's an interesting thought. Israel was serving Egypt 400 years, and they wandered in the wilderness following God and learning to obey Him 40 years. That's 10%. We give a tithe of 10%, yet in this case, they wandered in the wilderness 40 years because they disobeyed God, and that's why they could not enter the promised land sooner. So this number could be associated with God's judgment. Jesus also fasted 40 days in the wilderness, days to years, and you find Jesus' time in the wilderness matches Israel's time. However, while Israel was tempted and sinned, Jesus was tempted and did not sin. While Israel grumbled about hunger, Jesus fasted. Jesus, the Son of God, made atonement for Israel, but also for us all. He mimicked the wandering in the wilderness, but overcame the temptation. How cool is that? And I only thought of that just now as I was writing it. In an article titled, Meaning of Numbers in the Bible, the number 40, it says, The word 40 appears 158 times in the King James translation. The number 40 generally symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. It can also mean or symbolize a generation of man. I'll include the link in the video description. There are quite a few significant numbers in the Bible. Three is the number of the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28:19 through 20 Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I have a playlist about Trinity that I will share at the end of this video in case you want to know more about that. 7 refers to the completion of creation and the seventh day of rest. Genesis 2 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Twelve represents the twelve tribes of Israel. In the breastplates the priests wore, there were twelve precious stones that represented the twelve tribes. Exodus 28:15, And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work, after the work of the ephod shalt thou make it, of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twined linen shalt thou make it. Verse 21 continues, And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. Also, in the wall that surrounds New Jerusalem, there is a foundation of precious stones representing the twelve apostles, whose names are carved into that wall. Revelation 21.14 and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So there are a lot of significant common numbers in the Bible, but the significance of them must be kept in context. 
I don't claim to know or understand all the meanings or the full significance of these numbers, but the fact is that numbers are a part of everyday life. God is a God of order, not chaos. Numbers give us order in this world, and they show us a little something about how even God organizes things in his creation and in our lives. No one number that may happen to come up in life necessarily means that something significant, either good or bad, is going to happen. Superstition and magic makes numbers into symbols of luck. Numbers are only significant in the right context. For example, the number 666 means you are selling your soul to the devil only if and when it is in the context of the mark of the beast, which is put in or on the back of your right hand or forehead. If you get a bill, a house number, or a phone number that happens to have three sixes in a row, it doesn't mean the devil will come to drag you to hell. Also, if the day happens to be Friday the 13th, that doesn't mean anything bad will happen to you unless your fear and anger keeps you from thinking clearly enough to avoid or solve problems that might just as well have happened on any other day. Don't let numbers rule your thinking. James 1, 5 through 8 If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Hebrews 4:14 4, through 16 Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Trust in God for all things. Turn your fears and problems over to Him, and let Him lead you to solutions. That starts with trusting Him with your life and your salvation. That starts with repentance of sin, turning away from it, and turning to Jesus for forgiveness and salvation. You can begin with a simple little prayer like this. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you rose again the third day. I repent of my sins. So please forgive me for my sins and come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Help me overcome sin in my life and live for you. So I will have joy when I see your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Get a Bible and start reading it to learn more of his will so you can live out his holiness in your life. If you have ever wished you could read the story of Jesus' life from all four Gospels chronologically, You might like Emmanuel by April Marie. You can check it out at any of these websites, also included in the video description. Thank you for watching. May you trust in God.